This week I'm going to be painting this doorway. The reference photo for this comes from Pixabay. But the aim for this week is to keep things really loose and simple. So this is mainly going to be used as more of a guideline, I think. But I want to be as creative as possible with this and add some extra bits and pieces to it and just see what we can make of it. So here's some of the equipment I'll be using for today's painting. I'm painting this in my sketchbook, so that's been really great for me recently to practice in. The brushes that I'll be using for this are my size 12 round, size 6 round and my number 3 rigger brush. The colours used in this painting were Payne's Grey, Burnt Sienna, Hands the Yellow Light, New Gamboge, Cadmium Red and Cobalt Blue. But I'll list all of these in the description box below, so if you want to have a go at this yourself, you'll be able to check that out there. As usual, I'll talk you through the tutorial and list the steps that I took. I'm showing you the palette here as well, so you should be able to see how the colours have been mixed along the way. But I'm also going to use this as an opportunity to tell you the things that didn't quite go so well. So if you do decide to try this for yourself, you'll be able to take that into account as well and hopefully have an even more successful painting. So to begin with, I am starting out with some clean water and I'm using my number 12 brush for this and I am just wetting the whole of the page. You'll see that I've masked the page down and I'm just holding that down so it doesn't buckle with the um, addition of all that clean water. And I'm adding quite a lot here because I want to work a lot of areas wet in wet and I don't want it to dry too soon before I've had chance to cover the whole thing. So I'm adding quite a bit to this and giving it some chance to soak in. I've kept the sketch to this really simple, I didn't want to add too much detail and I've changed it a little from the original so the position of the door is a bit different to the original photograph. I'm also going to add in some leaves for a tree on the right hand side just so it's a bit more seasonal. We can have some nice orange and red leaves there and some leaves on the ground. I've added in a tiny gap in the wall which is going to be a mouse hole <laughs> in the wall. Um, it felt like it was missing something on the side so that's what I've decided to add in there. But I've kept things as simple as possible and we're going to add detail with the paint rather than sketching in a lot of detail now. So once the whole page is wet it's then time to add colour and this is what I wanted to do fairly quickly so it didn't dry up on me. I'm using my number 6 brush for this now rather than the 12 and I'm kind of just using whatever colour I think would fit for this so you can be quite creative with this and use whatever you like. Here I'm using some new gamboge and I'm mixing it in with some burnt sienna for the initial wash. That's going to be one of the lightest areas and I'm just dropping that in and letting it spread out. I do keep changing the colour up so it's not the same colour all the way across. So sometimes I'll add a bit more burnt sienna, I add a little bit of blue in some areas so it's a bit darker and some red in some areas as well. So you can just keep switching it up so that you get a nice varied background and it's not all the same. In the top right hand corner I'm also going to make it quite nice and bright so I'm using Hansa Yellow Light over there underneath and then I'll add some extra colours on top of that. But this is just supposed to be really nice and loose and not too detailed at this stage. One thing I would say about this is that these colours didn't dry as light as I thought they would. So watercolour does tend to get lighter as it dries and I did expect these to lighten up a bit. Um, some of them stayed quite vibrant and quite colourful and dark so the initial wash was a little bit darker than I had intended. So next time I might just add more water to that mix to keep things a little bit lighter. Um, or maybe look at how it varies on different paper as well. This might just be that the book I'm using at the moment, the sketchbook, just keeps those colours really nice and vibrant as well. But the intention here was to keep them fairly light so I could build detail on top of that. And it actually worked out that they were much darker than I intended. So just something to be aware of. If you're having a go yourself, you might want to keep these initial washes a little bit lighter than what I did here. For the stairs underneath the door I wanted them to be a bit more blue and purple in tone rather than the orange and yellow we had on the top. 
So that way it would add a nice contrast. Blue and yellow and orange kind of go together very well and I wanted there to be a difference there. So I'm doing a light wash now of mainly cobalt blue but I'm mixing in a little bit of uh, the yellow colour to make it slightly greener than it was and a bit of red later on which will hopefully make it a bit more purple and I'm just putting in that first wash indicating where the stairs are. And just to finish off the last bit of white on the paper there, I'm going to make some colour for the doorway. This is going to be more of a purpley brown, so some red and blue mixed in to some of the colour that was already in the palette before. And that's creating this really nice tone for the doorway here. And I'm just putting that on really loosely. I'm going to make it slightly darker at the top and the bottom where there's going to be a little bit of shadow. But there's going to be a chance to build up detail later, so this is really just about getting that first initial wash down. And as this is starting to dry but it's still damp, I'm going to add an extra layer on top just to create some shadow tones. So I'm going to add a darker layer of the blue along the stairs there for some interest in the paving slabs. And I'm going to add a bit more orange and red into the area where I want there to be a tree on the top right hand corner. I'm just dotting on the leaves here and they're going to spread out into that slightly damp background. This is another area where I think I could have probably done this with a lighter shade and then built up darker tones as the painting went on. So if I did this again I'd probably go for more of a yellowy orange tone with more hands yellow light and new gamboge and just a tiny little bit of red to begin with because there was plenty of opportunity to darken this up as I went along. And while the paint is still wet, it's a good time to lift out any highlights you want to preserve. So I'm using my number six brush here just to go around a couple of edges and neaten things up a little bit. This only really works if the paint underneath is still damp enough to do this. So there's a couple of areas here where it didn't work as well as I would have liked. But it preserves a couple of highlights um, in some places, which just gives your painting a bit more dimension. I'm adding in some last bits and pieces now to this first wash. So a couple more darker leaves now with more of a red tone. And I'm also going to add a little bit more detail into the stonework at the bottom. This was the time where the painting was almost dry underneath. So I was probably pushing it a little bit too far trying to get these uh, last minute adjustments in. So again, if I were to do this again, I probably would have left some of these areas or just tried to get them done a bit quicker so they blended out into the background rather than having hard edges. So once that's all been left to dry, I've taken that opportunity to clean the palette 
and now I'm going to start adding a bit of detail into the brickwork. So I'm starting out with some burnt sienna. I'm going to vary that colour up as I go along. So you don't have to be strict with this. This can be whatever colours you choose. I add a little bit of new gamboge in there for some lighter bricks and then some blue when I want to tone it down. And I'm just varying the colour up. I'm putting in different brick shapes here, there and everywhere around the wall. I'm trying not to do this in any particular pattern so it seems quite loose still. I don't want to just do rows and rows of bricks. Um, with everything in, in a lot of detail, but this is just indicating some shape and form in the wall in the background. Some of these are a little bit darker in colour and others have more water to them so they're more of a thin glaze and that way you're going to be able to see some of the detail in the background and we're not just going to cover over everything we did in that initial wash. I'm also using a light glaze just to outline the edges around the doorway which are going to be separate from the background there. I'm going to go over this again with a darker colour but this is just indicating where I want those frames to be for the door. I'm just filling in a few gaps here with another colour for the brick. This again is a really light wash so it's not going to go over all of that background detail and it's just helping to fill things out a little bit. I'm not worried about the bricks not being the same size, this is just supposed to be a really nice loose sketch. I'm working my way around different sections of the painting so that I can leave one area to dry while I'm working on the next. I'm making a dark blue tone now for some of the shadow area of the steps and just to help give them a little bit more shape. And while that dries, I'm working on some more leaf details for the tree in the top right hand corner. You can see at this point, it would have been good to have a slightly lighter undertone of this. And that way, my orange and red leaves would have stood out a little bit better. So next time around, definitely I would do this area lighter. I've mixed up two different colours here. So I've got new gamboge and some cadmium red. And I've got some mainly cadmium red on its own. And I'm going to add in those leaf details. So the orange leaves are going to be more around the edges and it's going to get a little bit darker with the red as we move further in. I'm then going to add some blue to that red tone and put in a couple of purple leaves. And I'm going to add some purple details around the edge, which is hopefully going to look like it's a bit of a shadow underneath that tree reflecting onto the wall behind it. Now I'm making a much darker version of that mix, so a lot of blue and red and then a little bit of new gamboge as well to make it more on the brown side than the purple side. And that's going to be some twigs that I'll add in the middle of the leaves. By adding it when the leaves are still wet, 
that's hopefully going to help blend everything together so it's not going to look like it's just sitting on top and I'm leaving some gaps in between the leaves as well so that's going to give the idea that the branch is kind of half hidden under the leaves half standing out so hopefully that will make it look a little bit more realistic you can see that I also switched to the rigger brush for some of the fine details of the twigs so that it's not going to make them too uh, thick I'm mixing in some burnt sienna with the orange colour from the leaves and that's going to be used to outline the door frame here. So it's going to be the pillars on either side and using a darker colour should hopefully help to neaten things up a little bit and bring a bit of form to the painting. I'm switching to the rigger brush just to add some of that darker detail that we used for the twigs in the tree to outline the door frame here and to keep things a little bit neater. Sometimes it's a bit easier with the control of the rigger brush than trying to do this with the round brush. And I'm using that same colour to outline some of the brickwork. I'm not going over all the bricks here because I don't want it to look like it's too neatly lined out, but it's adding a bit of extra detail to that wall in the background. So moving back to the stairs, I want to glaze over another colour just to darken them up a little bit. So I'm starting out with the blue mix that we used before, which was slightly on the green side with some yellow. I'm adding in some red there to make it a little bit more purple. And I'm keeping it um, full of a lot of water, so it's really watered down and a thin glaze over the top so it doesn't cover over all that detail. I'm also going to add some orange into the pile of leaves on the right hand side. And those two colours should hopefully blend together quite nicely. And then I'm going to try and lift out some areas of stonework to preserve some of the highlights now we've added that extra glaze. I'm using more cobalt blue and cadmium red to darken that mixture now so that I can add some shadow details in between some of the stonework. If I need to cover tiny areas, I'll use the rigger brush. Otherwise, I'll use the number six round brush. And I'm going to use that for any individual details in between the stones. While it's all nice and wet still, that's all going to blend out. And hopefully there's not going to be too many harsh edges. We've got an even thicker mix now of that really dark purple colour which is going to be used for the edge of the stair to indicate the shape of the step. This is another area where if I did it again I'd probably change this a little bit. I'm not sure I got the perspective of the stairs spot on. Um, I think it works for this painting, it served the purpose, but I think I'd probably be a little bit more careful about the shape of the stairs next time just to make them look a bit more realistic. There is always room for improvement. I'm using the rigger brush to add some details to the steps along the top there to indicate the different stones. And then I'm also going to use the rigger brush to lift out some highlights in the really shadow area so you can see where those stones are separated. Using some of that purpley blue colour just to add a little bit more detail to the steps and make it a little bit darker around the edges. I'm also going to use that colour just to lightly glaze over the light area just underneath the door there just to tone it back a bit so it's not quite so bright white. 
For detail on the door, I'm starting out with some burnt sienna. I'm going to add a little bit of cobalt blue in there so it's not quite so orangey brown and enough water in there so it's easy to move the paint across the door. I'm going to start out at the top where the shadow is and then I'm going to drag that colour down using some dry brush techniques to try and create some interesting texture on the door and also to make sure that the colour varies as we move down the door. It's definitely lighter in the middle. So to do the dry brushing, I am just dragging the paintbrush down fairly quickly across the rough surface of the paper and that's going to give you some of the texture that you see here. I'm doing the same again along the bottom of the door, starting out with a darker colour. This one is slightly more on the blue side. It starts out with a fairly smooth consistency of paint and then as it moves up the door I start again with that dry brushing just to create more texture there in the centre. I'm glazing over the bottom step now in a similar way to how we did the top step. So using that bluey purple colour as a really light wash over the top and adding in some orange around the leaf area as well so that can all blend in together nicely. I'm not trying to add as much detail to this bit because the main focus should be on the top step and this is really just a secondary feature. And now I'm putting in some extra leaf details, so more red and orange added in there for some really dark leaves. And I'm using the rigger brush to add these on the top. You might not have to do this if you were happy with how it looked the first time around. I'm only adding extra layers where I feel like it could use just something a little extra. I'm going to add some of that into the pile of leaves along the bottom as well, just to try and tie those two things together. I'm using Payne's Grey to draw in the post that was on the side of the door. I'm also going to use Payne's Grey to outline a couple of other areas where I want that shadow detail. I'm using my rigger brush for this just to get a little bit more control. Once again I've waited for that to dry and now I'm going to add a couple of shadow details onto the door. I'm mixing in some Payne's Grey with the purpley blue mixture we had before and adding some water into that as well just so it's easier to move around the page. I'm going to put that shadow detail onto the top there and drag it down so it gradually fades out as it moves further down the doorway. I'm going to put a little more shadow detail on the right hand side as well to indicate the direction of the sun. And then I'm going to use my rigger brush to outline a few details on the door. I'm indicating some of the wooden panels on the door with quick, simple strokes from the rigger brush with that Payne's Grey mixture. I don't want to go over this in too much detail and I don't want them to be super straight because they're going to look out of place. So just really quick, speedy marks with the rigger brush should do the job. And now I'm going over some of the leaves in the background to make them a little bit more orange. I'll add some purple shadow tones underneath some of them to make them look a bit more three-dimensional. And I'm adding some falling leaves just to connect the tree to the stairs. So we're starting to get to our finishing touches now and bring this all together.
I'm now using Payne's Grey directly from the little pan there without mixing it and I'm using my rigger brush to add in some of the details along the door frame and I'm not being too precise about this, I'm just putting them in simply, it is just a simple sketch so it doesn't matter if they're not exactly the same but it's just bringing things together. So while I'm putting in some of those finishing touches with the Payne's Grey and the Rigger Brush, I'll go over another area that I think I'd probably do differently next time because I forgot to mention it at the time I was painting it. So as I was adding that dark shadow colour to the top of the door and dragging it down, if I were to do it again, I would try and make sure the consistency was a little bit better. It did create some streaky marks, which you might be able to see here. It was a bit easier to see in real life than on camera. Um, but I don't think I had enough water in the mix so it was hard to blend the colour out as it moved down the door and I'd like to do that a little bit smoother next time if I could. I've left it here because sometimes trying to correct watermarks like this can lead to major problems in watercolour rather than actually fixing everything. It's so much easier to make it worse. So I'm leaving it exactly as it is. It's an old doorway so I think it's likely that there would be some unusual marks on there and it kind of fits in with a theme. So um, it was just something that I wanted to mention. So if you were going to add that shadow detail on for yourself, just to try and get the consistency right so that it's easier to blend down and it doesn't make any unusual watermarks on your doorway. I'm adding in a couple of dots of Payne's Grey now into the door for some extra detail and then I'm going to mix in some more blue with that and add in some detail around some of the stonework as well which I feel just needs a couple of extra finishing touches. I've added a bit of burnt sienna to that dark mixture for details around the door frame. And now I'm creating a tiny little doorway for a mouse on the right hand side because I decided I wanted to do it so I'm painting it in. <laughs> I'm using a, a Payne's Grey mix for this. It's quite watered down so once that's been put in and I've done a little bit of brickwork around the edge of the doorway, I'm going to use pure Payne's Grey straight from the pan to create some shadow detail around the top and then I'm going to use that orangey red colour to make a little red mat, a doormat, outside of the mouse's house. And that's going to finish it off. So I'm going to add the tiniest little purple shadow underneath that doormat and then we're finished. The painting is complete. <laughs> so I hope this has been helpful to you and that you've enjoyed it um, and that the tips along the way have been useful. Just commenting on what I would do differently. Um, please let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm going to summarise some of the changes I'd make here so they're a bit easier to follow and, and all in one spot. I think the main one for me at the beginning was just to start with a lighter initial wash so that it was easier to build up darker colours on top of it. Particularly around the area of the tree, I think it would have been nice to have some really bright yellows shining through underneath that and then restrict the oranges and the reds to just some of the more detailed work on top of it. I would also work on the perspective a little bit. I think some of the lines have got a bit lost there and particularly around the stair just to make things look more three-dimensional and realistic. 
and I would take care with the washes that I applied, particularly the shadow detail on the door frame, just to make sure the consistency was good enough to be able to create a nice blended look of the watercolour rather than the streaky um, watermarks I ended up making instead. But those were fairly minor things, I think, and I am pretty happy with what this turned out like. I like it as it is, and it just gives me somewhere to focus on if I want to do this again, which is always good. Um, again, thank you for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this. I upload a new video every Wednesday, so I will see you all again next week.